friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Becky and today we are going to be doing my October wrap up. Alright, so it's a few days into November. It's currently November 7th, the day that I am filming this. I'm hoping you're seeing it shortly after filming and not too, too long in the future. But today I want to talk about all of the books I read in the month of October. Uh, I do want to also know this is going to be kind of a long-ish video as I read 17 books. I read one two-star book, three three-star books, one three-and-a-half star book, seven four-star books, two four-and-a-half star books, and one five-star book. I also have two books I chose not to read uh, this month just due to the contest. It just didn't warrant a rating. Yeah, let's talk about... Um, Talk about readathons. I completed a bunch of readathons this month. I completed the Spookathon. Um, I do have a vlog for that already out. I'll have that linked up above. Um, the Spookathon is hosted by Books and Lala and the sound um, she hosted it by herself. Uh, there were five prompts. I did complete all the prompts and I managed to read five books during that week. Um, I also completed the Witchathon. My vlog is currently being edited, so I don't know which of these videos is coming up first. If the vlog is already available, it'll be linked up above. If it's not, then you will see it as soon as it is available. But for the Witchathon, I completed all except one prompt. And I managed to read, I read eight books during that readathon, and I started two other ones. So, pretty fast, I was my progress for the Witchathon. But, um, let's get into actual titles, because I know that's what most of you guys are all here for. Um, and as a reminder, I do have uh, timestamps down below. I will separate by book in case you want to jump around and see my thoughts on a particular title. But without any further ado, let's start with the books I read. I am just going to go chronologically because uh, with this stuff, I feel like that's going to work best for me. Alright, so the first title I read this month was A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. This was a story that I have seen so many people talk about and I really wasn't sure what I was going to think about it. I listened to the audiobook while following along with the illustrated edition that I have here. And I really think that was the best way to consume the story. I really liked the storytelling uh, structure from the narrators on the audiobook. And I really love the illustrations and how atmospheric they are. Like, I feel like these just really capture the overall mood of the story. And I'm not going to lie, this story hit me way harder than I was expecting it would. I thought pretty far into the story and I definitely felt a more somber mood but I didn't think it was going to hit me until the very end and I was crying actually um I had a vlog that I was doing and ended up scrapping it but um here is some footage from me finishing a monster call guys um just finished reading the monster calls by Patrick Ness and wow that one was <sighs> That one was, it was good. It was um, intense enough to do what it needed to get the reaction. It was um, really heartfelt, but also like really heartbreaking. Um, I purposely went into this book with very, very little background knowledge. I did not know a lot about this book. I did not really know a synopsis. I, um, I went in with a vague notion that I had to deal with death of a parent and really that was that was really all I knew. Yeah, I thought this one was really good, uh, really sad. It didn't make me cry as much as I thought it was going to, but um, it's definitely going to be like the processing afterwards where I'm definitely going to feel more sad. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy I did get to this one. Um, I don't know if reading it shortly after, um, the 30th or on the 30th would really make a difference, but, um, yeah, this one definitely, um, definitely made me really sad. Um, it was good. I definitely get why people like this one. Uh, so yeah, so as you can see, I definitely enjoyed this one. Um, this one follows... A boy whose mother is going through some cancer treatments and as she's going through her treatments he is visited by a monster and uh, the story really takes off from there. This is a super duper short book so I don't want to go into more details as it can risk spoilers. 
I just know this one does deal with themes of grief and um, family illness and then of course cancer illness so it's just something to consider but I definitely see why people love this one and I'm really excited to go watch the movie now because um, if the book impacts me this way I'm really intrigued to see how the movie to impact me. Alright, the next book I read is probably one of my more anticipated releases for 2020, and that was The Tyrants 2 by Rick Wright Orton. This is the fourth book in the Trial of Apollo series, which um, many of you know this is currently my favorite Rick Wright Orton series to date. I think Apollo is one of the funniest main characters you've gotten out of a Rick Wright Orton series. I loved him in this series so much, and y'all think there's Things are happening in this series, y'all. Like, this is book four or five. So we have one more book coming out next fall, I believe. And we got we got a lot to happen. A lot has happened. Book four took me on a freaking emotional roller coaster. And, uh, yeah. So, um, I love this series so much. I really enjoyed this one. I listened to the audiobook. I am loving the audiobooks for the series. Uh, you're going to hear me say this a lot, but the particularly the Rick Wright Orton series, I think audiobook is the way to do it. The voice acting is amazing. It really captures the the nuance. Also, the Trial of Apollo books have a couple poetry humor based things in them, including an arrow that speaks exclusively in Shakespearean English. Uh, you have haikus that are the chapter titles, and then each prophecy, so finding prophecies are part of it, are told in a different style of poetry. So these are really subtle jokes for Apollo, who is the god of poetry, amongst other things, but god poetry is one of his things. And um, having uh, the poetry read to you really just adds an additional, like, thing to it. But yeah, loving this world, loving this story, I'm so... I'm feeling things, like a lot of things happen to book three, a lot of things happen to book four, and it's going to be really interesting to see how everything concludes. I definitely want to do a reread of Heroes of Olympus, um, and then of course the first four books by the time we get the fifth book, just because there are, there were some Heroes of Olympus references in uh, this book here, more so than the last one. The last one definitely focused more on like Percy with like Piper and Jason. From heroes popping in, but this book here, before Tyrants 2, so many heroes of Olympus references, and a few of them I did end up missing because it's been a while since I read the Heroes of Olympus book. So I think I'm just going to do like a full Percy Heroes Apollo reread before book five because we got lots of layers, and I want to make sure I am getting everything for this epic conclusion because I cannot wait. Um, Forgot to mention, four stars here, four and a half stars for Tyrants 2. Um, I'm sorry, my dogs are having WrestleMania, so I'm really sorry if the mic is picking them up. Um, but the next book I read, I have talked about quite a bit since I read it, but I do want to mention one more time that is The Diviners by Libra Bray. I am finally starting the series. I am hoping to continue on with book uh, for sure book two, hopefully books two and three in the month of November. We'll have to see though. My November is getting increasingly crazier. Guys, I am trying to kill these. Um, but I read The Diviners. I really enjoyed this one. I ended up giving it a four out of five stars. And this was a series that I heard so much about, so much hype about. I don't know how creepy it was. And I definitely wanted to read during the creepy season. And y'all, that was the way to do it. I'm not going to lie, I wanted these to be a big creepier, but I did have to remind myself this is a YA series, and um, I'm hoping it gets creepier as the stories go on. The fact that book two is called Layer of Dreams, I'm hoping that we have some dream manipulation going on. I personally find that terrifying, as I am someone that has dreams that made me question reality, and I find it uh, hardcore terrifying. So I'm really hoping that we get some of that in this book, but... Um, but we're talking about Diviners now. I actually have a whole video uh, reviewing Diviners as part of my book to maybe you do it series. So I will have that linked up above. Or if that does, you think I would know by now. Um, but yeah, really, really enjoyed this one. I thought that the intertwining plot worked really well. I thought that um, for the most part, Evie less so. But for the most part, none of the plot points in this book felt erroneous or stupid. Like everything happened for a reason, which made me really happy. As one thing, only have a lot of intersecting plot lines. I hate it when like we feel like we're getting unnecessary things happening. 
I liked how the characters intertwined, both knowingly and unknowingly. I really liked how not all of the diviners were, like, revealed to each other in this book. Um, I kind of was expecting, like, almost like an, an X-Men reveal ourselves by the end situation. I was pleasantly surprised that we didn't get that. I guess why this book has the hype that it does, like I said, I gave it one of four stars. I thought it was really entertaining and I'm excited to see how the series continues. Uh, the next book I read, not gonna lie, kind of put me in a rating slump, which made me really sad. Uh, so it was Kingdom of Souls, because I was so, so excited for. I saw Riley Marie talk about this one and one of her vlogs, so I will have Riley's channel and her vlog linked down below if you're interested. But um, this was a story that for me, the detriment was its pacing. And I know I'm not the only one said this, I saw a lot of reviews talking about the pacing. Um, but for me, the problem was that the slow parts of the story had me so bored, I wanted to be an the story, and I found myself struggling to want to pick this one back up. I alternated between the audiobook and the physical book, and I, I really struggled that time. I'm not going to lie, I generally think that there were some details of the story that I missed, just because um, there were parts where I was definitely getting bored and really struggling to stay focused while reading it. That being said, I still gave this one a three and a half out of five stars. I really love the world building. I love the mythology. And I did love the family dynamic. Um, the mom sister, the um, mom daughter, the dad daughter, and then the two sisters. Like, there was a lot of interesting family dynamics going on. Also, knowing more of the mom's backstory was so heartbreaking and so fascinating for what that meant for the story as a whole. Um, and that being said, though, the pacing really took me out of the story at times. And I'm not sure if I might continue on, on with the series. I do want to revisit this book sometime in the future um, to see if maybe on Pana Riri, once I kind of know about these pacing issues and things I didn't, didn't like, if maybe I can enjoy more on a reread. Um, I also feel like you said some details I definitely missed in this one, which may have affected my rating if I did or did not know about them. But, um, yeah, overall, though, three and a half stars, it was fine, just the pacing really took me out of it. Um, the next book I read was Horror Store by Grady Hendrix. Um, mostly because I saw everyone and their neighbor talk about this book. Natasha from my reading has all mentioned it. Um, Cody from Cody's Book Corner mentioned it. I think that uh, my dog just unplugged my camera, so I'm not sure where we cut off. But uh, I know, I'm pretty sure Becca from Becca in the books mentioned this one. Um, so many people mentioned the story. And also the format of it being basically like an Ikea catalog really, really intrigued me. So when my library had a copy, I definitely wanted to pick it up. And I thought, let's go have the audiobook. So I'm like, yeah, go the heck. Let me listen to the audio, follow along here. Again, there are a few PC issues. This is an overall relatively short story. So the fact that there were some pacing issues really took me out of it. Um, also, the ending got so weird. Once we figured out what was going on, and then how everything resolved, it just got, it got to a level of weird I was not prepared for, and I don't think I was ready for. But um, overall, though, it was, a, it was an okay story. I think I gave this one a 3 out of 5 star. It was fine, it was just, uh, really heckin' weird. Um, the next book I read is probably my least favorite of the entire month, and probably the most disappointing read of the entire month, which was unfortunately The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. I was so goddamn bored while reading this book, I almost see it after like six times. And this book is like 200 pages, which is not good. Um, I know that this is a classic, and it really is instrumental for the haunted house trope that we see in books. And this is, I think, one of, if not the first haunted house story. But yeah, this one just did not do it for me. I had trouble connecting to the characters. I had trouble focusing on the plot. At this point, I read the Wikipedia page on this one. And I'm like, okay, no, so I got all the major plot points, but still not clicking. Uh, the good thing is, is that I have not watched Netflix series yet. I purposely held off until I finished reading the book, and now that the book is read, I can watch it. I want to watch it around Halloween. That didn't happen, but I'll probably do like a Halloween in December CS for myself. I don't know, but I can now watch the show. That makes me happy. Unfortunately, I wish the book was better. 
Side note, this uh, Penguin Horror Edition with Zombie Owl Creek is freaking stunning, and I want to get more of this Penguin Horror books because, like, I'm digging these. Like, everything about these, I love. Um, and fortunately, the story, not so much, but the actual book is awesome. And another disappointing read. I just had a week of disappointing reads. Again, just because I was up there. So many disappointing reads, which, which breaks my heart. But this one, unfortunately, was also a disappointing read. Now, I will be fair to this book. This was the fourth book I read in a disappointing week, and it did not immediately grab me, which then had me bored. So it could have been me. This is a book I want to revisit. The way I revisited The Raven Boys when I first read it, I was a little disappointed. I'm hoping I was just in the wrong mindset, and a reread will really help me enjoy this one. Um, that being said, this book follows uh, a town that made a deal with the devil, and they have to sacrifice a boy every, three, every seven years. And by doing this, they basically have a utopia of a town. No one gets sick, uh, everyone is prosperous, and there's a bunch of good things happening. And so our book follows three main characters, Mawen, who is one of the Grace Witches, so she is one of the people that help um, make sure that the deal is being upheld. We follow um, Rune, I believe, to pronounce his name, who is currently the best boy, who is the boy that is meant to be sacrificed in the seven-year time period. And we also follow Arthur, who was originally raised as a girl, but um, because his mom did not want him to ever have to be considered as one of the best boys, and now later in life, it's not to question gender, sexuality, and what that all means. There's some polyamory here, which I really dug. Um, the thing for me is that I just did not connect with any of the characters, and I did not connect with the story. So I felt very passive when reading this one, and because of that, I was just waiting for the end. That being said, I really did enjoy the last, I'd say, hundred or so pages. I really enjoyed some things that we found out about some characters, um, some subtle comments, how they taught, how they tied back into the overall finale. That I did thoroughly enjoy. Um, that being said, I didn't enjoy this, everything leading up to this. I feel like I probably could have had a bigger impact with this book if I was enjoying it more. And I genuinely don't know if I just did not click with the story if this one was just not meant for me. Or because I was coming off of such a disappointing reading week, I was just in the wrong mindset. So I do want to revisit this one in the future. Just um, I want to give it some time, maybe next fall or something, uh, just to really like clear my head my current opinions on it. But um, this one, though, I know was on so many best of 2018 lists. Uh, Melanie from Melts of Annie adores this story, so if this is one that does sound interesting to you, um, I definitely do recommend Pick Up. I definitely feel like I'm the unpopular opinion, even giving this one a three stars. But um, I just wanted so much more from this one than what I actually got. That being said, after reading Strange Grace, I finally broke the lackluster books and the cycle of just reading lackluster, underwhelming reads, and I finally got something good, which is probably one of my favorite books of this month. It's definitely tied to my favorite book of the month, and that was The Whisper Man by Alex North. This is a story I've heard so much about, and there's so many people hyping this one up, and y'all, I was not expecting to like this one as much as I did. Thank you, boys, for wrestling right where I'm doing things. I was not expecting to like this one as much as I actually did. This book has a couple of intertwining plot points, um, but the main plot point is that a father and his son move into a town that is meant to be quiet, it's meant to help them uh, move on as uh, they recently lost the wife and mother to this family, and they're trying to start fresh. However, they are not aware that this town is known for a lonely serial killer known as the Whisper Man, who was around about 20 years prior to the start of the story. However, um, a young boy goes missing using the same manner, and now the police are trying to figure out is the Whisper Man back, does he have an accomplice, do they have the right guy, etc. And this one does play with a lot of the common tropes found in this type of story. Like, there are definitely some common tropes that are used that uh, avid readers that follow kind of like procedural thrillers will kind of like tick the boxes. That being said, at least in my opinion, I felt like we did just different enough things with them that I didn't feel like I saw every little thing coming. There was a shock about halfway through this book about um, the relationship between two characters that took me so freaking off guard. Like, I wasn't surprised that they knew each other. I was surprised how they knew each other. Um, 
And when I was giving this one a rating, I ended up giving this one a five stars, partially because I could not find any reason to knock off half a star without being picky. And this book actually is the reason I raised my rating on um, the new Ruth Ware Turn of the Key. I upped that one from a four and a half to five just because the things I liked about that one, the things I liked about this one were so similar that I just, uh, five star was the correct option. Um, I do have a full review for this one, both spoiler and non-spoiler video reviews, so I will have one of those links in the cards and both will be in the description if you're interested. Um, then I read a book, I'm not going to lie, I was a little nervous and hesitant to read because I saw so many negative or mixed reviews on it, and that was The Anonymous Girl by Dear Hendricks and uh, Sarah Pekinen. Now, I want to preface, I loved The Way Between Us. I was listening to it on um, my road trip to California that I did last winter, and I did not see some of the big things coming. I did not read the synopsis. I went into this book about as blind as one can go into a story. And I was caught off guard by some stuff. I really enjoyed it. And it was a book that I definitely think was one of the best thrillers I read last year, um, having been pretty new to the genre. This year, I definitely kept up my thriller kicks. And so when I saw this book coming out, I was intrigued but nervous. And I was even more so um, nervous because this book is about psychology experiments, which if you guys don't know, I do have a background in psychology, but actually I have my master's, and my particular master's is not probably a license, um, it has a research-based job, so I do psych research, uh, well, not currently, but I guess I was doing college, and that's what I'm hoping to make a career out of once I go back to school for PhD in the near future. Um, but yeah, so like having a book that talks about psychology experiments, had me a smidgen nervous because if it was too unrealistic, like, and I mean, like, I know for thrillers, you have to suspend your disbelief a little bit because, like, that's how, like, these thrilling things happen. But, like, if things went too into left field, I knew I was going to be so out of the story. That being said, I don't know if it was just the mood I was in or what, but y'all, I really like this one. I've seen a lot of people giving it, like, three stars and things pretty mad. I think I enjoyed this one because. While Life Between Us has kind of a shocking twist, um, an anonymous girl goes exactly where you think it's going to go, but it does it pretty well. Like, I, some of the main points that were happening, I feel like I call like two or three chapters before they happen, but I wasn't mad that I was right. I think I was just enjoying the story so much. I didn't mind that I was calling some of the stuff. I thought it was executed pretty well. Uh, again, there is like a bit of like suspend your disbelief um, with some of these plot points, but overall things were like acknowledged that like, oh yeah, this is not how this happens, you are the reason something weird is happening, and enough of that was like, was done that I was able to buy it. I mean, you still have to suspend your disbelief, and I'm not saying that this is like an accurate representation of like a psychology experiment or anything, but nothing happened to too left field too early on, it completely took me out of it. Um, overall, though, I thought it was solid spoiler. Right White Between Us, I still think it's better, but I don't think it's like a five and a three situation. Like, both of them I gave in like the four star family, I just thought White Between Us was more interesting. All right, uh, the next book I read is one that I was not expecting to love. I had never read a book by this author before, and book two hyped the hell out of this book and I almost didn't pick it up because of the hype because I know most of the hype was not because of the story, it was because of the author and uh, I was hardcore terrified that this was going to be my first experience with this author especially because when people start talking about the actual book I saw reviews all over the place. I saw two star, I saw you no know, five star, I saw middle of the pack. Um, it's Ninth House. I read Ninth House, and I loved it. I gave it a four and a half out of five stars. I loved this one so much. I was hooked from the start. Um, I wanted to know just more about what was going on, what's going to happen, and um, I I do acknowledge there's intense stuff in the store. I'm not gonna not gonna dump it. I'm not gonna say it's not. That being said, for me personally, nothing was like too over the top, I can handle some pretty effed up stuff, at least like if I'm reading it, if I'm watching it, of course it's a different color, but if I'm like, if I'm reading it, 
I can read some pretty fucked up stuff I had to do it for a research project. Um, but because of that, Night House is, like, right up my alley, and I found out how much I love grimdark fantasy. Like, I was all for this book. I thought it was great. I thought it was fascinating. I thought it challenged the most interesting concepts about if magic was accessible to people and the misuse of it. And y'all, that cliffhanger at the end makes me mad we have to wait two years for another book. Like, 2021 needs to be here now so I can read book number two. Thanks. But, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this one. I do have a full written uh, review. I will link that down below. Uh, as I don't want to spend too much time on it, I these next few books I talked a lot about in my Witcherthon um, blog, so I don't want to go into too much more detail. But like I said, uh, Ninth House, I have a review for it. will be down below. Uh, but, yeah, I personally love this one. I thought it was freaking amazing. And I'm even more excited to try out Libra Dugo's uh, YA Christopher's and Six of Crows and then King of Cigars because I love this book so much. I'm really excited to try some more of her stories. I've been like hesitant to pick up. Uh, the next book I read was an e arc I did for a blog tour. I'm really excited to be getting back into doing some blog tours. And I read Seduced by Kate Allure. And um, this is a smutty BDSM romance. That I was pleasantly surprised with. Um, BDSM romances, but I do like them. I'm very nervous. I have a lot of friends that are a part of the kink community. And so because of their influence, I try really hard to uh, be fair if the BDSM romance is a positive or negative representation of the community. And also, I thought the juice was. It takes place mostly at a sex club. So um, the BDSM in here is mostly like blindfolds. Um, know, tying up usually like handcuffs or like light role play. And then there is a little bit of like exhibitionism, uh, voyeurism, and then there's a little bit of um, spanking in here. So for the, like as the BDSM stuff goes, it's very introductory, but I think it's really good for someone who is curious about the BDSM community and wants something a lot healthier than Fifty Shades. Um, I'll get into that rant in a different video. Or uh, you just watch the Dom because or he changes it, Dominic Noble. Uh, you can watch Dominic Noble's videos on Fifty Shades because we share a lot of opinions on those books. Um, but that to you aside, um, so do stuff that was really interesting. It does have some triggers in it for um, attempted assault and rape and then obsessive lovers and stalking. I was not prepared for that, and so I do want to let everyone else know, mostly because the character that gives most of this stuff uh, I felt like a really odd character is actually what kept me from giving this one a higher rating. And I was debating between three and a half and a four stars, mostly because of some of those aspects. Not that I'm mad they were in the book, they just felt very out of character for the individual doing those acts. Um, at least for the introduction we had of that character up to that point. Uh, overall, though, I thought this was a really solid uh, romance. I really love the dual perspective we got from Ian. And Tori, I thought that was really interesting, um, especially with uh, knowing the background of both those characters. It was really interesting having POV chapters from them, and it made some of the sex scenes even sexier to get from both perspectives. Um, there is a little bit of an age gap in here. It's a 30-year-old guy and a, I think, early 40s-year-old woman. Um, so it's not like an opinion out of the you know, realm of you know, like norm age gap and everyone's like well above the age of consent. Um, but I know some people like it when uh, age gaps are mentioned for romances. Um, again, I do blog tour for this one. I have a full review link down below in case you are interested. Then I did a complete 180 from my house and to do. So we went from Grimdark Adult Fantasy to Smutty DBSM Romance to Middle Grade because that's the natural progression of reading. Um, but I finally read City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab. And y'all, this is the cutest fantasy story. Oh my gosh. Um, as, like, middle grade fantasy goes, um, I had dipped my toes into it, but, like, not, not very much. And this story was something I would have loved as a child. It was creepy and spooky. It was very atmospheric, and I feel like this is, like, a great in-between for, like, a goosebumps to, like, scary stories. Like, this is a nice, like, in-between. Like, I feel like the goosebumps books are on the campier side. This is very atmospheric, and then you have, like, straight-up terrifying with, like, the scary stories, like, for the age group. Like, I was 
scared by the scary story book. Yeah, but um, but this one follows uh, Cassidy, who has the ability to see ghosts because of a near-death experience. Her best friend is a ghost named Jacob, and her parents um, start a ghost hunting show. Uh, her dad kind of follows like the more skeptic, like historical side. Her mom's not like the believer side, and so they go to find different places to film for their show over the summer. And so they go start out in Edinburgh, Scotland. And um, one of the things I adored about the story is that Cassidy, with the exception of like, being able to see ghosts, which is debatable realism, um, Cassidy felt like a totally normal. Uh, young girl, I think she's in middle school this one, she's like 12 or 13, and I thought that like the consequences, like she was missing for a little bit, and her parents are naturally freaked out and then they ground her, I thought that the, like her relationship with her parents is so precious, like a lot of middle grade I read, you have absent parents or you have like Percy Jackson, like Percy is away from his mom for reasons explained in like the first chapter or two of Percy Jackson, like his mom's like really not in the story. Um I watched until like uh the beginning and like the end and that's really it. Um Harry's an orphan for Harry Potter, but this one has such a strong, healthy, positive family relationship, which I loved seeing. I know that some books kind of use missing parents as like a driving force as to why the kid can do the weird thing. This one she has to do around her parents just that was really cute. Um, I love her relationship with Jacob, and I love how strong the stakes for this book were. Like, the main antagonist and the main threat in this book felt like a genuine threat. It felt like Cassidy really had something to lose, and that if things went wrong, she might not be able to, like, recover from it, which I was personally surprised that now you see kids' books having that stake. Some authors, like, won't go there for a book for children, and Victoria Schwab definitely went there. Um, I love this book so much, I immediately read Tunnel of Bones, which is a sequel, and again, love this so much. I love how she didn't recycle villains, she didn't recycle plot points. Uh, Cassidy is learning more about the ghosts and the ghost world and the ghost realm. Uh, you have a different but equally interesting antagonist in the story. Her relationship with Jacob is really explored a lot more in the story, and you find out some really interesting things, and yeah. Love this one a lot too. This one takes place in Paris and you actually get to see the catacombs, which is really interesting. And I am really excited. I know that there's a third book. I think it's coming out next fall. Um, so I'm definitely really excited to check it out. And this is definitely a new favorite middle grade series that's great for spooky season. Then I read or reread Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Neon. Uh, this was one of my favorite books of last year. I thought it was super duper powerful. I thought it was very gripping, very interesting, and I really enjoyed it a lot more on the reread in some aspects. I gave this one a four and a half star on my first read. I'm giving it a four star now. Um, that being said, I did, I feel like the four star better represents my overall feelings towards this book, but on the reread, I really enjoyed Lay's and Ryan's relationship a lot more. I thought that the I thought that the stakes for their relationship was a lot greater on the reread, and there were some just really heartbreaking moments in this book that I thought were captured really, really well. Um, I will forever cry. Actually, I ended up just skipping the chapter that had um, that was death in it. It was in the uh, first 20 pages of the book, so it's not a spoiler, I promise. Um, I, ended up, I, I just skipped that part, Death of a Pet, you guys know, is something I'm a little hypersensitive towards these days, but um, I ended up skipping that, but uh, the story though does have trigger warnings for violence and sexual assault, and uh, well-deserved trigger warnings, but nothing felt exploitative in the story. Everything really felt like it needed to be there to help um, with the state and with the plot and to really get the overall message across, and um, I really enjoyed the story and I read this one because um, as, if you guys saw my book on haul you know I had an arc of Girls of Storm and Shadow which I wanted to read by the November 5th release date. Um, as spoilers it hasn't happened it's November 7th I'm still reading it. I got um, a couple chapters in because this one in October um, so I'll talk about this more in my November wrap up and I'll probably have a review come out before the end of the month uh, hopefully because I'm hoping to be done with this book by the weekend. But, um, that being said though, 
uh, I wanted to be ready to read this story and like, I'll share my, uh, my thoughts on starting to come up with you guys um, later this month or at the end of the month, but just let you guys know. I am reading this. I didn't finish it, and you'll see thoughts also pretty soon. I uh, read uh, these two books here. This is the Book of God and Goddesses, a visual directory of ancient and modern deities, and this one is um, Wiccan Magical Deities, a guide to the Wiccan God and Goddess, and choosing a deity to work magic with. You guys can probably guess what these books were used for. Um, I did not rate either of these ones. But I do want to include them on my wrap up as I thought they were pretty interesting introductory guides. If you are um, practicing uh, any sort of craft or just wanting to learn more about various deities from around the world, both of these books are a really great introductory source to that. Um, this one just includes a lot of world religion and deities uh, associated with various religions. So this one has, um, I think, this still covers most of them, yeah. There's me, uh, the Near East, which is Baths of Mesopotamia, Persia, um, Egypt. Then we have uh, the Greek and Roman gods, Celtic and North. We have in the Americas, the Aztec and Maya gods, and then the Native North and South American gods. In Asia, we have um, Indians, and mostly like Hindu, um, Chinese and Japanese, and then we have African and Afro Caribbean, and then some from Oceania. So that's what this book covers. And this book covers some of those ones, but also specifically uh, the god, the goddess, um, the triple goddess associated with the book of religion as well. So, these can be not use my books um, associated with the book of religion as well. So, these are just really great reference books if you want to know more about various deities, uh, whether you're just interested in mythology or you're interested in calling upon them for a practice. Um, the last full book I read this month, I'll have one more mention after this, but the last book I actually read this month was Gods of Jade and Shadow. This is by Silvia Moreno Garcia, and I'm really sad I did not love this book more than I thought I was going to. Um, this book follows a young girl who ends up making a deal with the Mayan god of death to help him acquire his missing body parts um, in exchange for uh, one wish of her heart's desire. She grew up um, in a pretty wealthy family, but she was kind of seen as an outsider and a pauper due to her mother um, getting with a guy that the family did not really find was the best choice. And basically, she grows up being like her family's maid almost, but she's not allowed to like associate with like the other help because she's better than them. So she's very ostracized, very lonely. And her cousin, who treats her like other crap, um, ends up being on the opposing side since uh, the mind god of death's brother was the reason that he is missing his body parts and wants to keep it that way. And Adventure kind of um, goes from there. Uh, this one, I was really hoping for a little bit more from. I guess really struggle to kind of connect with the characters and the story. Um, I do want to say, though, I really love learning about the Mexican history in this one. This one takes place in the 1920s. So, um, learning a bit about the Mexican history and kind of watching some of that influence um, how our main character does things with that was really fascinating. As it's a history I really don't know that much about, unfortunately my history classes like to uh, not cover that at all. I just really struggled to get into this one and I'm really sad about that. Um, I do enjoy stories about my mythology, but I feel like this one just wasn't it for me. Um, that being said, the final task that is done between um, our main character, Cassiopeia, and her cousin was really, really interesting. And I did, I did enjoy that part. And I did like how this one kind of ends a little open-ended. I'm not sure if it's part of the series or a standalone, but um, it has really good aspects to it. It just has some things that are kind of missing the mark for what I like for my mythology stories. And because of that, I ended up giving this one a 3 out of 5 stars. But I can see why other people could definitely rate this one a lot higher than I did. Um, and I just want to quickly touch on, I did start Gideon the Ninth um, by Pam Senor. I know that there are so many people that adore the story. I was really adoring the audiobook. And then I got to a point where I just feel like I missed something. I don't know if I like fell asleep and like missed a chapter and just didn't realize it or what. So I am playing this one on a temporary hold until I can get a physical copy where I want to listen to the audio because I'm loving the audio book. The uh, voice actor is hilarious, especially the voice that they have for Gideon is so funny. Um, and I do want to like, just kind of follow along that way. Um, 
but yeah, this is one that uh, so many people are loving, and I'm really hoping to read by the end of the year. But I just want to quickly include that I did start this one, um, and I'm hoping to finish it sometime, hopefully November, possibly December, or what we Uh But yeah, this, uh, those are all of the books I managed to read this month, and yeah, um, it was a lot, but I'm really happy, I'm really excited to get back into these larger reading months, and definitely to try to do a, I'm possibly going to start doing mid-month wrap-up, I don't know. Um, mostly because, like, I go through reading waves, like, I won't read much for, like, one week, and then, like, I'll read, like, eight books in a week, like, I have no wish upon, so it makes it really hard to do a mid-month wrap-up. I don't know, we'll see, but, um, I am excited that I did get to read these, uh, as you guys can see from the ratings, like, um, I enjoyed most of what I read, but everything really was all over the map, and I'm excited to see how, um, how well this stuff uh, continues for the last two months of reading in 2019, or 2018, I would be wrong, 2019. But um, I'm going to turn it over to you all now. Let me know what your favorite or least favorite October read was. Let me know uh, what you thought of the books that I finished. If you've read any of these, let me know how your thoughts compared to mine. Um, there, If I have uh, written or video reviews for any of these books, they are down below as I have more detailed and um you said thoughts down there and I think that's everything I have so uh be sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you made it all the way to end to the end and uh yeah I think that's everything I have so thank you all so very much for watching and I will see you all in a new video coming very soon bye